Hey everyone, Eric here from Lapix. Got another video for you guys today. Hope you guys are all doing well. We got this uh, MacBook that is unwell, and it's in here for repair. This is a A1990. It's a 15-inch MacBook Pro, just not powering on. If you guys didn't already know, we're located right outside of Washington D.C. in Alexandria, Northern Virginia. We take in walk-ins as well as mail-in repairs. If you guys are interested in mailing in your MacBook for a no power issue, liquid spill, or even data recovery, we'll be glad to help. Check out the links in the description down below for how you can send in your MacBook, and we'll love to take a look at it. And so we have a USB-C tester, and the USB-C tester is gonna show uh, what's going on with the MacBook. Let's go ahead and plug it in, uh, one of the four ports, and see what's going on. So we're getting about five volts, which is very low, and we're getting about 0.01 amps. Five volts may be okay if you have like a phone or a more low power device. Um, but this is a MacBook, it has an Intel processor on this model, so it needs so it needs more juice there. So we need to open it up. Let's go ahead and take a look at it further and see what's going on inside there. Okay, so lift this up. Man, this thing looks clean. It looks pristine. It looks like someone actually dusted it because there's almost no dust whatsoever. It looks almost brand new. Lift this up, take out the board. So we got the board out and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at it a little bit further. We didn't notice anything uh, crazy obvious there, so let's go ahead and check the thermal activities because when you take voltage in, um, it's gonna show that the board should get some type of warmth. Should show, and if there's usually a bad component, um, it may uh, show a better idea of like where something might be located. And it's out, so let's go ahead and plug it in and just see how the board's reacting. Does the board look very clean? Um, if we know it's liquid, we would go there right away, but we want to see how the board's reacting. So when you plug it in, you're always going to get um, these components get a little bit uh, excited, and that's, those are your CD32s. This is the T2 area, um, and that could be a problem too. I'm going to go ahead and unplug it. we we'll see if the T2 is going to change behavior. Yeah, so it's not flaring up. So this is your T2, this is your security chip, and that's normal for at least for it to come on, power on. Um, is if it shows the there's a good flow, so that is coming up there. Let's flip this over, and we have two that are really close to each other on this side, and the one C32 you can see that is getting warm there, which is part of the USB-C circuit. If I plug in the other one, we have very good voltage and uh, things happening, so that looks to be pretty normal too. That one died a little bit quickly, huh? Maybe it's not plugged in all the way. Okay, so each port shows on on each one there. Um, we don't see any signs of obvious damage, so let's go ahead and um, remove it. We didn't see any obvious damage. What's the difference if I just plug this in from here? Let's plug it into the board directly, and let's see what we're getting now. And wow, look, so we are getting our 20 volts. So we saw normal voltages. Each CD32 looked to be about the same because they're showing the same thermal activity when you plug in each port. And then we did see the T2 getting warm. So I have very few things plugged in. I have our keyboard because we want to see our fan spin. And then I also have our USB-C ports. Oh, and I did not plug in the LCD connection yet, no. So um, I'm going to unplug the battery because this one does require a battery to power on. And um, we saw we were getting 20 volts without our battery, so that shouldn't really be an issue. So let's go ahead and try it now. Let's plug it in and let's see what we're getting. So if I plug this in with a few things connected. OK, so we see we are getting a short because the short is there. So we're getting about 5 volts, about 0.01 amps now, so we have a short still. What usually is pretty important for the most part as far as a few things that we have connected uh, we don't have the touch bar because then the touch bar has its own firmware so we always unplug that while we're testing we do have the touchpad and we do have the keyboard the keyboard does communicate with the trackpad itself there because the trackpad um, is basically the brain of the keyboard um, and you need to have a uh, trackpad working to have a keyboard working um, and the fans are connected to the keyboard so this is all part of that so when you have that if you see fan spin you should get it from this way so what i can do is i can test something that's more obvious and usually is a pretty good indicator especially on older macbooks for something not powering on is the trackpad because the trackpad has uh, cracks in it um, just crevices where it's easy for anything to reach like liquid spill or something so let's just unplug the trackpad and let's look keep an eye on this one and see if we get any change so zoom in a little bit better so you guys can see and we'll see the fan spin so I'm going to go ahead and unplug the trackpad and we see oh look at that so we see this is resetting over here and now we're not getting our uh, 5 volts well it's converting now it's the 20 volts there uh, we probably won't see power on or even a fan spin I don't think because you need the battery connected 
Um, OK, so that looks to be the, the issue. So I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. Let's plug in our battery. OK, so we have a battery connection back. Now let's go ahead and plug this in. And we should get fan spin. And we should probably get power on um, because we have a, a battery, if the battery is healthy. So let's see. So we're getting about 20 volts. And see, OK, the higher amps. Let's go a little bit higher. Higher, 1.6, and we got a fan spin. And that means we should probably have a display here soon. I guess I could zoom out. Takes a little while, especially if it's uh, the battery. OK, so we have a battery charge icon. So we're getting power, but um, we need it to charge for a little bit. That means it's charging. If I would disconnect the battery, it would show um, like a battery icon not charging. It would show that. So it looks like we have a problem with the trackpad. OK, so we remove the trackpad. And I, it's hard to see anything. Uh, let's go under a microscope and see if we notice anything. Let's go check the connection. That looks fine. OK, so you see this here? This is an indicator of maybe some type of liquid. So um, they also do have some components that sometimes go a little bit underneath. But that looks like there was some liquid damage. So maybe there's some liquid somewhere here. But it's hard to tell. But even on this side, too. Um, I don't see anything, right? It looks clean. There's no anything outside of that, but uh, there was some type of impact somewhere. So let's take out this cable. Let's see if we see anything. Maybe there's like a slight runner connection. Oh man, they, they like to get uh, excited with this one. Let's say glue it. Okay, that connection looks to be okay. We're just going to put it on the trackpad. And um, we'll try it out. Let's just plug it in here and see. I don't have it fully screwed in there, but it's just a test for now. See if it changes. Not sure anymore because we believe that is the problem. So let's see if we're getting our correct voltage now. With the trackpad in, and we are. So we've got about 20 volts. Um, trackpad is connected, battery is connected, so we should see the charging icon again. Uh, we'll probably just have to let this thing charge up. Okay. Oh, okay, so it looks like it powered on. Okay, so trackpad's working, so let's also type just to make sure. Okay, everything looks good. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video on doing a repair for the A1990 15-inch MacBook Pro. If you guys are interested in sending your device for any type of MacBook repair, MacBook data recovery, MacBook with liquid spill, we have a work order that you can fill out on our website. Link all the contact information in the links in the description down below. If you guys are interested in sending in your device for a repair or even for data recovery, go ahead and check it out. We'll love to help you guys out. So I hope you guys enjoy watching and see you guys next video. Thanks a lot, guys. Take care. Bye.